Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. So today I'm going to show off Windows 11 running on the AYN Odin. And I've actually been running Windows on this device for over a month at this point. When the Windows build for Odin was first released in mid-March, I had initially planned on doing an installation guide. But honestly, I found the installation process to be a little bit convoluted. And so I held off on making the installation guide in case the developers were able to make a more streamlined process. Now unfortunately, that process hasn't really improved in the months since I first did it, and so I decided it probably wasn't going to be worth it to make an installation guide, it's a little bit too complex. And so before switching back over to Android, I decided to do a gameplay performance showcase, and that's what you're going to see in this video here. So it's mostly going to be gameplay footage to give you an idea of the potential of running Windows 11 on this little device. But before we do that, let's do a couple caveats first. Number one, putting Windows on your device will flash the Android operating system. And so I recognize for most people, you're probably not going to want to do that. Additionally, in this showcase, I'm only going to show off PC gaming, because when it comes down to it, the emulation is going to be way better on Android anyway. And that's because we're using the ARM-based version of Windows 11. So you will have some limitations. For example, you won't be able to play 64-bit games at any sort of relative speed. And so therefore, the games you can run on this will be limited to 32-bit and ARM-friendly games only. Generally, that means that platformers and indie games will work the best. And as luck would have it, those are the best ones to play on this device too. Okay, I think that's about it in terms of previews, so without any further delay, let's jump into it. Now in terms of installing Windows, like I said, I'm not going to do a guide here, but I will leave links to the GitHub page here. And honestly, the process is pretty straightforward if you follow the steps here. A lot of the issues that I experienced in the installation process had to do with the Android drivers running on a Windows PC. And so my recommendation would be, if you do try this out and you aren't able to get the device recognized on your PC, to use the Issues tab here in the GitHub page to contact the developers. But essentially what you'll end up doing is making a flash drive that has Windows on it, and then flashing that onto the Odin. The process itself took about an hour altogether. And I'll also leave a link in the video description to Taki Udon's video of the same process. He goes into a little bit more detail and also has some tips and tricks to get the best performance on Windows. But either way, this is what it's going to look like once you have it set up. And I've gone ahead and installed a bunch of games too. Altogether, I had about 40, 45 games working, and I had them all stored on the SD card so as not to take up the internal storage. And the games themselves are a combination of my Steam library, GOG, and then some indie platformers that I got from itch.io. And there's a couple different ways that you could potentially browse through your games. Probably one of the easiest ones would be to use the Steam Big Picture mode because then you can just add all of your non-Steam games and have them all in one. And that's a relatively easy process and you can use your gamepad to navigate through the menus. You could also use something like GOG Galaxy to browse those same games too. And I actually think this looks better than Steam Big Picture mode, but you're going to be limited to navigating through your games using the touchscreen. Either way, there's quite a few options that you could do if you wanted to really get into it. But like I said, we're going to focus mostly on gameplay in this video here. Now a couple other quick notes, the Windows build here is not quite perfect. In fact, there's a slight delay when using the analog controls altogether. And so when it comes to playing first person shooters and stuff like that, it actually wasn't as great as I thought it would be. Instead, I found that games that use the D-pad were just way more responsive and fun to play. Additionally, there's not really a mechanism in here to accurately see how much your battery is draining as you're playing. And so the only way to really do that is to close out of your game and look at the menu bar and see how much battery is left. In general, I would say I got about four to six hours of battery life when playing. So not super efficient and definitely not as good as on Android, but not terrible either. For most of the games on the top left, you'll see the afterburner readout. So you're only gonna be able to see the RAM usage and then the frame rate. And I'm also gonna give a letter grade to each of these games, which you can see on the very top left. In general, if a game couldn't use D-pad controls, I never give it higher than a B, mostly because the actual control experience was pretty limiting. But I think you'd be surprised at how many A's I ended up giving. And that was probably my favorite thing about this whole project, was that many games which I would love to play on the Odin were actually playable here in Windows. But whether or not that's worth sacrificing the entire Android operating system, I don't really think so. Anyway, let's get to the game footage. Now this one is an example of a 64-bit game. You can see that it's crawling at like 2 to 5 frames per second. So unfortunately, because this game doesn't have a 32-bit version, it's absolutely unplayable. But I wanted to give you an indication of what that experience will look like.
Okay, for Portal 2 and Half-Life 2, I wasn't able to actually get the game controller to register, and so I was limited to using the keyboard and mouse controls. And that's pretty contradictory when using a handheld system like this, and so unfortunately I wouldn't recommend it. But one thing I did want to show is that while playing Half-Life 2, I accidentally tapped on the trackpad too much and scared the crap out of myself when I shot. And so I thought you would enjoy this little snippet of footage. <laughs> anyway, that's just hilarious, so uh, let's move on. Okay, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to show off a little bit of gameplay footage here. I think the fact that I decided to keep Windows on the Odin for over a month says a lot about how much potential we have here. It was super cool to jump into games I never expected to actually play on this device. But like I said, it's probably not worth sacrificing your entire Android operating system in order to play a few games. But if you happen to have two Odin devices, and one of them is the Pro version with 8 gigs of RAM, then this might be something worth considering. And there's a whole group of people who have been testing out Windows on the Odin, and they have some pretty cool discoveries about tips and tricks to maximize the performance, and which games work the best. And so I'll leave a link to that in the video description as well. As always, thank you for watching, be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!